All right, so in this video, we are going to talk about how to optimize your campaign. And so the, the purpose of this whole process, the purpose of this video, and, and really the purpose of campaign optimization is to ensure that we are spending our ad budget as efficiently as possible at all times, whether we have a limited or unlimited budget. So if we have an unlimited budget, then the purpose of, of this campaign optimization system is to ensure that we're able to scale our campaigns as profitably and as high as possible. And if we have a limited budget, then obviously our purpose is to ensure that we are spending every dollar as efficiently as possible. So we're making the most money that we can from the budget that we have. And so ultimately boiled down, this means that um, the purpose of our campaign optimization is to identify and scale the highest ROI ad sets and campaigns and kill off all of the non-profitable ad sets as quickly as possible. And so the campaign optimization workflow starts with a daily paid traffic KPI or key performance indicator report. And so we're, we're going to go into this, but you're going to track your paid traffic KPIs on a daily basis. And then you are going to perform optimizations and testing based on that data. Absolutely no more fre frequently the one change per ad set per every three days. And so typically, I recommend only making changes and tests on Mondays and Thursdays. This is designed to give the Facebook algorithm time to optimize on your behalf and, and just it's easier if you keep all of your tests on Mondays and Thursdays, which ultimately allows you to just sort of keep straight the uh, the campaign optimizations that you have in place and and things of that nature. Now, like we mentioned, the daily KPI tracking should be performed every single morning for the previous day. So every morning you're going to log in, pull up your KPI tracking sheet, and then log in the data for the previous day. You should pull your ad spend and click data from the Facebook business manager. I'll show you what I mean in a second. And you should pull your data like leads, revenue, and conversions from your CRM or website backend if at all possible. This is because... Facebook pixels are not perfect. So you might be wondering, well, why can't I just pull all the data from the Facebook business manager? I set up my pixels. That data should be all in there, right? Well, the data is in there, but the problem is the Facebook pixel almost always over reports, which means that the data can't be trusted with more than 60% certainty. And so while the Facebook business manager data will be directionally correct and can be used to make optimization decisions um, on like an ad set level, the Facebook business manager data should not be used for KPI tracking or client reporting simply because it's not exactly correct. And so what do I mean by that? Let me, let me just show you briefly here on our whiteboard. So imagine this is your actual actual landing page data for A and actual B. And then you have your Facebook business manager data for A and Facebook for B. So in actuality, you may have had 30 conversions on your uh, landing page A and 35 conversions on landing page B. However, Facebook would likely report that as 45 conversions on A and maybe 52 on B. And so this is the actual data and you wanna make sure that you are reporting on this data, especially when it comes to conversions and revenue because this is going to be what's accurate. Now when you're making ad set to ad set optimization decisions, you can still make decisions based on Facebook Business Manager because obviously like it's it's directionally correct, right? B is more than A in both of these. It's just you can't rely on these numbers as set in stone numbers because they are very often inaccurate. And so that's that's what I mean um, by saying that the Facebook Business Manager is often directionally correct, but it should not be used for KPI tracking or client reporting. And so how do we actually use the KPI tracking sheet to make decisions. Let's click over to an example KPI sheet. This is this is real data from last month um, on on an ad uh, account that I manage. And um, and so you can see here, it, it may look overwhelming at first, but it's actually a very simple spreadsheet. So you have the date in column A, you have the total ad spend for a given day, you have the clicks, um, you have the cost per click, which is just a, a calculation. You have the leads, I pull this from the CRM. 
and I guess it should back up. So this this particular ad account, uh, the funnel is an ad to a webinar registration, to an application, to a phone sale. And so you can see we have the number of applications, the cost per applications, the number of sales, and total revenue and net revenue. If we scroll down to the bottom line, we can see that for the month of May, spent just under 49 grand and generated almost $130,000 in total revenue, which gives us a total ROAS or return on ad spend of 264% and a net revenue, which is just total revenue minus ad spend of 80,000. So all in all, a, a pretty solid month. And so ultimately what I do every morning is I log in and I just input this data from Facebook Business Manager and I input the leads, the uh, appointments, the sales and the total revenue from the client CRM and then everything else is just a calculation. And so what this this KPI, daily KPI tracking sheet allows me to do then is take a look at every single stage of the funnel and, and see where I'm, uh, where I'm overperforming and where I'm underperforming. And so for example, um, obviously we had, a, we had a profitable month and so overall everything's going well, but there's still certainly areas for improvement, right? Like if you look, if you look at the first few days of uh, the month, we have an average uh, cost per lead of $8.91. And if we look at the last few days of the month, that average cost per lead is $9.74. So that's almost a you know, 10, 15% increase in a cost per lead basis. Now that tells me one of two things. That tells me that either my cost per click has gone up or my conversion rate on the landing page has gone down. Now if I look at my cost per clicks for the first, call it 10 days, I have an average of a buck 35 and for the last 10 days um, have an average of Let's see, an average of a buck forty-five. So it's gone up by ten cents per click, um, or excuse me, it's gone up by about yeah ten ten cents per click, which you know isn't isn't a dramatic increase by any means. Um, what would be slightly more concerning is let's just check on my uh, lead conversion rate on the landing page. So we take four thousand nine hundred forty-eight leads divided by thirty-five thousand six hundred thirty-five clicks. That's only a 13.8, so it's basically a 14% conversion rate on the landing page. Now, I know that, that a solid benchmark for a landing page is typically a 20% conversion rate, and so that tells me right there that there's a pretty big opportunity for me to get this cost per lead metric down by improving the conversion rate on the landing page. So that could either mean that I, I make changes to the landing page itself, or it could mean that I make changes to the ads to get the cost per click to go down and hopefully uh, target more qualified people who are more likely to actually register on the landing page. And, and so um, that's just a, a very specific example of, of how you can use this data to then make optimization decisions. Now it's important to note that you don't wanna look at this data in isolation, right? Like I could create an ad that drops the cost per click to maybe 25 cents per click, but it could also um, cause the cost per lead to jump up. So like if, for example, an extreme case, if I created an ad that said click here for a free car, I'm gonna get a lot of really cheap clicks, um, but I'm not gonna get many leads and my cost per lead is gonna be very, very high and none of those people are gonna convert. And so even though I improved the front end metric, um, I didn't keep in mind all the back end and, and I ended up losing money as a result. And so it's always important to never lose the forest through the trees in these types of situations and to always make sure that you're optimizing for the end result, which is revenue. And so even though, yes, there are opportunities to improve on the front end, I mean, there's opportunities to improve on the lead to app uh, conversion rate percentage. I'd like to see this closer to 10%. Um, and so there are opportunities to improve throughout this entire funnel. But at the end of the day, this is a very profitable funnel and this is a very profitable campaign. And so I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize that. So I'm gonna be very cautious about the, the tests and the changes that I implement simply because at the end of the day, I'm getting the results that I want and I don't wanna jeopardize that. And so um, this is just an example and, and an overview of how you can use this daily data to actually go in and make informed decisions. And, and we're gonna drill down into this much deeper and start filling this out uh, together in an upcoming video in this module.
Now, I want to talk about something called statistical significance, especially how it relates to making decisions based on that KPI spreadsheet we just took a look at. So I want to be very clear, this is not a statistics class. I am not a mathematician, but the concept of statistical significance is incredibly important to us as marketers. And so essentially what statistical significance does is it allows us to say with confidence that a result in our advertising campaigns is actually a real result as opposed to random variance. And so let, let, let me give you an example of what I mean. So if we were to flip a coin twice, before we flip it at all, we would statistically expect to get heads once and tails another time, right? You flip a coin, there's a 50% chance you're going to land on one or the other. So if we take a coin and then actually flip it and we get heads both times, would it be reasonable to conclude based on that sample size of two flips that every time we flip a coin, we're going to flip heads from now until the end of time? Of, of course not. That's just ridiculous, right? And this is because getting heads twice in a row was due to random variance and is not a statistically significant result. And so despite how trendy it is to talk about making data-driven decisions and being a data-driven marketer, it is shocking how few people actually understand just how random the random and random variance can actually be. I've seen a single day of poor results cause marketers to question their entire strategy and start to make knee-jerk reaction decisions. And tr making a marketing decision based on one day's data is, is literally the equivalent of changing your entire retirement strategy based on the day-to-day -day movements of the price of Bitcoin. Like it's just ridiculous. It's, uh, it's, it's dumb. I, I don't know how else to put it. And so let me show you what I mean. On any given day throughout this month, despite the fact that this was a massively profitable month, on any given day, the results varied dramatically. Like take the first three days of May, for example. On the first day of May, we made $1,300. On the second day, we made $4,800. And then on the third day, we lost $1,500. Now, would it have been a good decision on the third day when we lost $1,500 to panic and start making knee-jerk reactions to all of our campaigns and changing our strategy and, and just thinking like, oh, oh my gosh, the sky's falling. We lost $1,500. We need to make changes. Absolutely not. That would have been a terrible decision. And in fact, had we made that decision, we almost certainly would not have ended the month at $80,000 in profit. And so the single day in May, or this single day on May 3rd was just random variance. We randomly lost 1500 bucks. So what? Who cares? The next day we made 1800 and then we lost $3,000 over two days. And then we made $9,600 the next day. It's all random variance. It all goes like this, but over time it trends up and to the right. And so it's incredibly important to not make knee jerk reactions and knee jerk decisions based on short term data. I've literally seen uh, marketers in, in Facebook groups say things like, hey guys, just launched this ad, had eight clicks and not a single sale. Is something wrong? Like, should I change something? What should I do? And they're just like panicked over this. And it, every time I see that, I literally want to throw my computer out the window. Like that is just ridiculous. Eight clicks is not a large enough sample size. That is pure random chance. You can't make a decision based off that. And so the only thing I can say is treat your marketing like a long-term investor and not like a crack addict. You have to be this in this for the long haul. You have to make calm, rational, data-driven decisions. And so how do you do that? Well, there's some, there's some, I mean, you can, you can get into the math and the nitty gritty. I'm not super interested in that. There's a few rule of thumbs that I follow to ensure that I'm making statistically significant decisions. And so at a bare minimum, I do not consider data or a trend that lasts less than three days to be statistically relevant. Typically, I wait to see if something happens for a week before acting on it. So going back to our KPI sheet, let's say we had three days where, um, where we actually lost money. So I don't, oh, here's a period right here. So here's three days where we actually lost money. I would not even care until we got to day five or six of losing money where I would feel like I needed to take a deeper look and see if something else was going on. And so three days is the absolute minimum amount of time that I consider something is potentially statistically significant. 
Typically, I wait to see if there's an issue for a full week before actually acting on it, simply because I know how random random chance can actually be. And at an ad level, when making changes or, or testing a new ad or ad creative, I do not consider ad results to be statistically relevant until they receive at least 30 clicks and preferably until they receive between 100 to 200 clicks. And so if an ad receives less than 30 clicks, I don't even care about the data because it's just it's completely random. Typically, I prefer an ad to receive between 100 to 200 clicks before I make any decisions about whether or not that ad is actually overperforming or underperforming. And, and making decisions on a data set any smaller than, than these above rules of thumb is, is the equivalent of flipping a coin. So sure, you can make a decision. Maybe you'll be right. Maybe you won't be. But it's not going to be a smart decision ever. And, and the last thing and the most important thing uh, to keep in mind when, when optimizing campaigns is that results trump everything. And so when, when you're optimizing a campaign, if you're looking at an ad set or an ad that appears to be out of KPI in the front end metrics, so maybe your clicks um, are, are super low, your, your cost per lead super low, your add to cart super low or, or super high, but that is outperforming compared to the other ads ad sets in that back end, I leave it live. And so what do I mean by that? I mean that let's say like this is a perfect example, right? So our cost per click is probably a little bit high. Um, our cost per lead is definitely a little bit high, especially given the, the conversion rate on the landing page. But ultimately, I don't really care that much. Sure, it'd be great to bring it down, but I don't really care that much because my back end metrics are all that I care about. And I'm profitable, and that's all that I care about. And so that's, that's ultimately all I care about. Results trump everything, right? on the, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, results trump everything. See rule number one of managing Facebook ads. If it's profitable, don't try and fix it. So if an ad is ultimately profitable, who cares if the CPCs that you're getting are higher than you initially modeled? I certainly do not, and you shouldn't either. And the flip side of this is also true. So when you're monitoring a new ad, ad or an ad set, just because the front end KPIs are within your model or outperforming does not mean it will actually be profitable on the back end, results trump everything. And so maybe I launch a new ad and I drop the cost per click to 25 cents, right? And the CPCs are at like six bucks. So seems like a massive improvement down here. But I know that all I care about is the back end. And so if a week goes by or two weeks go by or whatever my sales cycle looks like and I don't have a single sale from that ad, I'm probably going to reconsider whether or not I want to roll that ad out simply because even though it's, it's better on the front end, it's driving in leads who are obviously not converting, which is, is against what I want. I, ultimately, all I care about is results and it's not getting me results. So I'm probably going to kill that ad. It's also worth noting that your ad absolutely can impact your leads likelihood to convert on the back end. And so when launching a new ad, just like I said, even if the front end cost per clicks and, and cost per leads are significantly cheaper than your existing ads, it does not necessarily mean that your new ads will be more profitable. And so you need to wait to confirm that your new ads are actually getting you the results that you want before you go and you make any drastic decisions. And so following this framework, and again, we're gonna drill down into exactly how to do this in real time with the ads that we launched together, but following this framework will allow you to take any campaign, regardless of, of how it's performing, maybe it's a poorly performing campaign, maybe it's a, a moderately good performing campaign, but following this process will allow you to take any campaign, immediately diagnose what's going on in that campaign, and then start implementing tests and optimizations to improve that campaign, and ultimately take any ad campaign in any industry selling any product from you know, wherever it is to the next level and the next level beyond that. And you'll be able to continually get better results in your ad campaigns. I'll see you in the next video.